I'll give an example of how to write a C program and using the GNU debugger will spit out the assembly language for that C program. Now this has a couple different um, tasks that it can accomplish. I find it useful for a number of reasons. The first is for debugging and the second is for looking at the assembly code. If you want to learn how to code a specific uh, instruction or task in assembly and third to learn x86 uh, assembly language. So let's get right into it. Uh, we'll create a simple program just to uh, load up and load in the debugger and display the assembly. So let's create a program called asmexample.c and do the skeleton. Okay, all I'm going to do is a couple very simple uh, variable assignments and I'll do an addition or two and then use the print function just so we have a function call so we can see how to do that. So we'll do int a equals 1, int b equals 2, int c equals 3, and let's do a e plus equals b, a equals a plus c, which are the equivalent. And then finally let's print the value of a. And let's save it. And we will compile it with the dash G flag so that we can do our debugging, uh, the name of our program, and we use the dash O flag to name our program, ASM example. And we just compiled it, and we are ready to run it. So let's use the GDB command with our program name to load up our program in the GNU debugger. So let's get right into debugging. Um, We'll use the list command to display our source code. You can see our C source starts at line 1 and goes through 16. So we'll do info 116 to say, let's start at line 1, go all the way to 16, and sorry, use the list command, 116, and you can see our entire C source. And real quick, let's check our breakpoints. We have no breakpoints set, and in order to display the assembly, for this example, we'll just create a breakpoint when we enter the main function. So let's do B main info B, and you can see that we have our breakpoint um, on the main function at line six. So let's get right into it and run our code. And you can see that we broke at line six where we're setting the variable A uh, to a value of one. So let's get right into showing the assembly code. So th the command is disassemble. So it's shortcut for that. So it's D-I-S-A-S-S. -S, and here is our assembly language. So this assembly code is the equivalent of this C source code. Um, and real quick, I'll just give an overview of the columns. Um, you can see each of these is an instruction that the compiler uh, generated from the C source code. And they're executed in sequence. And this column here is the memory location of the instruction. So uh, this push instruction is located at this memory address. So it's basically pushing the EBP register onto the stack. And then this move instruction is at this memory location. Here's the offset from the previous instruction. So you can see this instruction is, you know, one byte off. This one is three bytes off. This one is six. And, you know, it's basically just the offset from the beginning of the, the function, from the first instruction. So um, the third column is the actual instruction. And the next one or two columns are the arguments to the instruction. So some have one, some have two. For example, the push uh, is just pushes, this is pushing a register, the EBP register, onto the stack. This one is moving the, the ESP register, the stack pointer register, into the base pointer register. Um, this is performing an AND function, a subtract. This is just moving. So this command here is the equivalent of setting A. So this, this is actually a hard-coded value 1, which is moving into this memory location, uh, offset of 14 hex from the stack pointer. But I'm not going to get into too much of the instructions. Um, but you can look them up and get more information about them. Um, and you can see here this call uh, when uh, in assembly, whenever a function is called, we get the call function. And you can see that's memory address. Uh, this instruction is located at this memory address, and it's calling the printf function. And that printf function resides at this memory location. Uh, 
So real quick, I'll show you how to step through assembly language code. And very similar to stepping through C source code, uh, the command that we'll want to use to start off with is the next. But when we're dealing with instructions instead of C source code, we may have multiple instructions. If you just want to execute one individual instruction, you use the next I command. Uh, you can see the next instruction that will be executed marked by this equal arrow sign. So let's do next I and then use disassemble command. And you can see now we executed, uh, this is the command we just executed. So if we use the next I again, it'll execute this. So now we, our A should have a value of 1. And uh, let's print the address of A. And that is the address of A, which is an offset of 14 hex from the stack pointer. If we want to print a memory and location, we use X followed by the format specifier. I'll do a digit, and we can do the these values in the parentheses as a register. So you use the ESP plus the offset, and you can see that we just printed the value in memory there. But I don't want to go too deep into that. So we can keep using next I and the disassemble command. And one thing to point out is an assembly which is very useful is the instruction pointer. So if you want to look at your registers, you can do info reg, and this gives you the value of all your registers. And of course, I'm on a 32-bit system, so these are the 32-bit registers. And one of particular interest is the EIP, which is your instruction pointer, which tells you the next instruction that's going to be executed. So if any time you want to know it's going to be executed next, you can look at this instruction pointer and see that 804-8436 is going to be executed next. And that corresponds to this instruction here, which is going to be executed um, if we use the next I. So I'll keep using the next I. And I will keep going. So you can see now we're moving. You Move instructions are being called. And this is actually moving values that are being pushed to the function. But that's we don't need to be too concerned with that. So we can use the next I, the next I. And you can see, I'm just trying to get to this call to illustrate how we can uh, step into this function or step over, similar to how we did with the C source. So let's do next I. So now we're at the point where we're going to call this printf function. And we can take two options here. There's two options we can do. We can go into the printf function and debug the assembly language inside the printf, or we can step over it. So I'll show you how to step over it. So if you don't want to go into the function, you'll use the next i. And we just stepped over that function call, and um, we're going to do the return. So this move, we're, returning, we're moving the value 0 onto the EAX register, and I'll continue. And that shows how we stepped over the call function. So again, I'll just give an example of how to step into the printf function if we so wanted to. So let's do info b. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete that breakpoint, d1. And I will set a breakpoint at line 12. So we'll go right into the printf function. Um, so we'll do b12. And let's go ahead and run our program. And you can see we just broke at the printf function in the source code. So let's display our assembly code and we'll need to execute a couple instructions to get to the function and here we are at our call instruction so I'll show you how to go into the printf function if you so wanted to do so so you can use the step I which is similar to the step command which we use for source code so if you want to step into an instruction into a function of an instruction, you can use step i. And now we're actually in the printf function here. So we're in this function. And you can see the commands that are going to be issued in that printf function. And we can do continue. Just I just wanted to show how you could go into it. And our program continued running and printed the value of a. So I'll include the, the source code to this a uh, little example if you want to try to step through some of this and uh, hope you hopefully you find it useful thanks